Hey, thanks again for tuning into Sims Workshop here on YouTube. Hope you're all having a great day. So today we're going to be talking about Ravel the Desk by Elizabeth Lim. Absolutely love this novel. Um, you think I'm going to say something bad, but no, I'm just trying to gather my thoughts. Before I looked over my notes. Um, I, what I really liked about this book is the characterization. And I really do think the characterization is solid. You know, in the first novel, I don't know if you've read it, um, Spin the Dawn, it's a journey uh, that Maya is going on of self-discovery. You know, she really didn't see herself as a lot of strength. All she wanted was to be a tailor, and in order to do so, she had to uh, masquerade as her brother. Now, what was... Sorry, my back is killing me today. Um, I hope you all, maybe I should pull the camera a little closer so you can see me. Oop, 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 oop. Oh. All right, a little better. Um, I think the journey she goes on in this novel is much different. She's definitely a stronger character in this novel, um, that's for sure. She. She's stronger in a different way. She's still going on a journey here. She's still developing as a character, but her journey is more different. It's it's fueled by her battling the darkness inside of her. Um, if you read the last novel, you know that she's slowly turning into a demon. And the only thing that's keeping the demon at bay are the three magical dresses that she made in the first novel. Uh, the sun dress, the moon dress, and the, you know, the blood of the stars dress. Let me say this first. I love how Lim has developed the magic of these dresses even more. In the pre first novel, we didn't really get to see the magic of the dresses. We saw her make the dresses, so we kind of had an understanding of the dresses, but now we know that these dresses symbolize the mind, the body, and the soul. And I think that was incredibly compelling because they are the only thing that's keeping the demon at bay. And every time she uses magic, she's putting herself more and more in danger of falling into darkness. So I like how Lim went a step further in developing the magic of these dresses. You know, there's more to them than just being pretty dresses. And I liked that, you know, I appreciated it so much because you really got to see these dresses in action and you really didn't get to see them in action a lot in the first novel. Uh, now these dresses are all that's keeping the darkness at bay for Maya. Not just that but all the strength that she learned, all her inner strength that she learned in the first novel. But here uh, in this novel, like I said, she's still growing as a character and I love that I love when characters continue to grow because the one thing I hate is when you're reading a series and the characters are just kind of like stagnant it's like no they should still be growing because everything that's happening just like in in real life things that happen change you whether they change you for the better or for the worse we don't know but when you read these characters going on these journeys they need to be as real as possible in order to make a connection with the reader and for my that happens because she's still growing she's still developing she's still becoming stronger and i found that incredibly compelling as far as her characterization goes because she has to contend with this darkness she has to fight it it's a constant inner battle for her to do this, to grow and be better, you know? And I thought that was very well done, you know? I have to applaud Lim on that because so much has happened. So much has happened. So, of course, so much has to happen in order for her to grow as a character. Um, now, sorry, I'm just trying to gather my thoughts again. Um, 
Ooh, this is what I was going to talk about. <laughs> I'm still on the note of characterization. I'm sorry, guys. My allergies are killing me today. Um, making it very hard to kind of breathe and talk and stuff. Um, so I do apologize if it seems like I'm not all here. I did take some Sudafed to kind of help out. Because allergy medicine doesn't always work for me. So, Lady Sarnai is amazing. In the first novel, I didn't much care for her. You know, she just kind of came off as this brutish, aggressive, petty little princess. Um, and I wasn't really a fan of her. I wasn't. I thought eh, she wasn't really important, you know, so I was glad that we didn't get to see a lot of her in the first novel. However, we get to know her more in this novel, and she becomes really amazing. I love her. See how that happened? I went from not caring for her at all in the first novel to loving her now. She's kick-ass. She's amazing. She is incredible. Um, and I love how her and my, they kind of, they balance each other out. They're so very different um, as far as characters go. They are very different, but their dichotomy creates such a beautiful balance. And it's, it's so great to see two female characters as strong, powerful leads. And Lady Sarnay, she is the stronger physically, I think. Um, she has a great sense of honor. And you really didn't get to see that in the first novel. So to see her grow and develop in this novel was really impress impressive and incredible. I ultimately loved it. Love her now. Love her. Um, I think Lim made a great decision in focusing on this character and giving her more vitality and giving her more life. You know, because like I said in the first novel, she's really unlikable. Like, you can get it. She's forced to marry this horrible prince she doesn't want to marry. But she's very cruel to a lot of people who don't deserve it, my included. And that was the one thing I really didn't like about her, how cruel she was. In this novel, you really do get to see another side of her, uh, a nicer side of her, a um, merciful side of her, a more honorable side to her. And that's where I think this novel uh, surpasses the other one in the characterization, because these characters are going on these journeys, you know, they are learning to contend with the darkness inside of them, themselves you know they're all going on these inner battles and they are coming out stronger for it and you know we do get to see other characters as well you know you have Ami you have Iran you have her father Mai's father and her brother we get to see them more here as well and I really like that there's a larger cast of characters and they're all very important Yes, they are side characters, but they are important to the progression of the novel because they affect Mai as a character. They fill her with goodness, with strength to battle this darkness that's growing inside of her. And I really did appreciate that, that we got to see a larger range of characters than in the first novel. We really didn't get to see, yes, you had all those tailors in the first novel, but you didn't really care about them. Like, they were just her competition. Um, but here, you care about these side characters. They are important to the story. They are important to the plot. And that's what's good about it. You know, that there's all these characters, but they are important. Uh, another thing that really annoys me is when you have side characters, and you're just like, okay, then why, why are you here? You're not important. You know, I think I reviewed a book uh, a couple weeks ago where I said that. You know, I'm just like, this person didn't need a point of view. I serve no purpose to the story. You know, I hate that. hate that. It's just one of my pet peeves. It's just like, if, if it doesn't need to be there, if the story works without it, then cut it. I think that's something I learned from college. Because, you know, I went to Emerson, studied my literature publishing. I think that's one of those things that I learned. Um, lots of cutting. <laughs> uh, so, I appreciate that Lim made her characters important to the story and to the plot. You know, they all have really strong dynamics with one another and it really does create a really fresh, unique 
take on Asian folklore, you know? And I can't say this enough. I love the magic in this novel. We got to see magic in the first novel, yes. There's no doubt about it. But I think there's more to it. Like I already said, you know, we already get to see the magic of the dresses used more. We get to see how they represent the mind, the body, and the soul. We get to see them flourish and come to life. And her demon magic as well. And the competition, you know, the, you know, Lady Sarnay's father. You know, you get to see these other demons. So it really does give a good balance of light versus darkness, good versus evil. But in a very fantastical, very magical way. And I like that. I really do like that. I think I do think it, Lim did a great job in her storytelling. I think she did a great job in her characterization. You know, the pacing of the story is very steady. You know, you get those bursts of high tension, high momentum moments, but you know, it goes do 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 but it's steady because it flows, you know, it speeds up, slows back down just a little bit and then speeds right back up. So you are engaged in the story, you know, you don't get lost in it. Sometimes when I read stories that are just bum 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 bum, I kinda get lost because as the momentum is increasing, you know, the speed in which I read personally increases so I'm like wait what just happened and I have to go back and reread because I'm just so engaged in the story so I like it when stories take a moment to slow down so that the reader can take a breath and absorb what just happened I love that especially when you have the magic in the story those ma that it's pivotal it's so important for the story that you need to like absorb it and be like whoa and really take into account the gravity of what's happening in the story. So it's a really steady pace. It goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, but you don't get lost, you don't get bored, and it's very, it's very fluid, you know? It allows the reader to breathe so that we can absorb everything that's happening and I I enjoy that very much you know I kind of blew through this book I think I read it in just a couple hours I'll have to look at my book way up <laughs> to see but it's very steady um, and that's what I like about it that's what I appreciated about it overall so um, there you have it that is is Unravel the Dust by Elizabeth Lim. I'm going to go ahead and give it four stars. Yeah, four stars. It was a good book. I think it was a really good conclusion to this duology. I love the exploration and fantastical magical twist to Asian folklore. I think it is a powerful novel and I really do like the progression of the characters and how well-rounded the story is and the dynamics as well. So once again, Four stars to Unravel the Dust by Elizabeth Lim. You can go ahead and purchase the book on bookshop.org. There will be a link in the description below. Highly recommend bookshop.org because the percentage of all proceeds do go to local booksellers. If money is too tight, please check out the book from your local library because libraries are a great resource for the community and definitely deserve our support. And I hope you will support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And as always, happy reading.